we need to try to grasp the idea that this God left his throne, left his majesty, we sang in one of the songs, enthroned and robed in all his majesty, and yet he left it all to come down here and be with us. God with us. It's hard for us to grasp and understand that. So I want to tell you a story. And the story I want to tell you is about a man named John and his wife named Sarah. And they lived in a little town up north in a farming town. And they pretty much led a quiet life. They had been married for over 20 years. And on this particular night, it was Christmas Eve. And Sarah was trying to convince John to go to church with her because they were going to have a Christmas program. But John quietly refused. And he said to Sarah that he wouldn't go this year. And as she walked out to go to church, John thought to himself, I can't sit through another sermon where they're talking about God becoming man. Think about it. God becoming man. How ridiculous the notion. Why would God lower himself to become a lowly man? He couldn't understand it. He couldn't grasp it. And so he just couldn't put up with another sermon about how God had become man. So as his wife left for the service, he sat in his comfortable armchair and he looked out his large window. He had a window that reached almost to the ceiling and at night he could see the stars and he just loved sitting in front of that window. And as he's sitting in that window, he notices that it's beginning to snow again and he knows how the snow can get very strong. So he decides to go outside and make sure that the door to the barn is shut tight. So as he steps outside, it has begun to snow hard, and the, the, the wind is blowing, and he, he takes his coat, and he puts it around him, and he feels the chill in his, in his body, and he begins to walk quickly towards the barn to get his chore done over quickly. As he's walking to the barn, he hears this sound, this strange noise, and he looks back to the house, and he notices that up against this large window that he has are these tiny sparrows that are banging against the window. They're trying to get into the house through the window. And at first, John couldn't understand their strange behavior. He was wondering, what in the world are these birds doing? But then as he, as he stood there and he saw these birds, he realized that they were being attracted by the light inside the house and the warmth that they could feel through the window pane. And so he stood there thinking, how can I help these birds? What am I going to do? So he thought, okay, I'll, I'll go to the barn, I'll open doors of the barn wide, and, as, and I'll turn on a light, turn on a lantern, and as soon as they see it, the birds will go into the barn, and they'll have a, a warm place to spend the night. So he runs to the barn, and he opens the barn doors wide, and he even turns on a lantern in the, in the barn, and, he's, and then he turns, and he looks towards the window, and he's waiting for the birds to realize what he's doing and for them to fly in the barn. But the birds aren't flying towards the barn. They keep banging against the window. So he runs towards the birds and he begins to wave his hands at the birds to try to shoo them into the barn. And all he manages to do is to scatter the birds. They're flying all over the place, scared. So he's standing there and he's thinking, aha, uh -huh, food. So he runs back to the house and he grabs some crumbs of bread and he runs back and he begins to lay a trail of broken pieces of bread from the window all the way to the barn hoping that the birds would see the bread and begin to eat the bread and go towards the barn. But the birds aren't interested in the bread, they're interested in a warm place so they pay no attention to the bread. So he's standing there, he's getting very cold now, the snow is getting heavy and he's thinking, what am I going to do with these birds? So he thought, okay, I'm going to try to act like the birds. So he begins to wave his arms up and down, flattering like the bird and cooing like the bird. And he runs towards them and he's flying and cooing and, and waving his arms. And he's hoping that they'll follow him to the barn. But when he gets to the barn, he looks back and there are the birds. By this time, he is really frustrated. Not only frustrated, but he's angry at these birds. And he's standing there and he's looking at these tiny sparrows and he's thinking to myself, what stupid birds. All I'm doing is trying to help them, trying to show them where there is safety, 
trying to tell them where they can spend the night in a warm place away from the storm. But they don't understand me. What can I do to, for these birds to understand me? And as he stands there, he's looking at these birds, he's thinking to myself, if only I could communicate with them somehow. If only I could speak their language. I could talk to them. If only I were like one of them. If only I could become like one of them. And suddenly he stopped. And he realized what he had said. And he repeated it to himself. If only I could become like one of them. And he realized the reason why Christ had come as man. And as he stood there, the, the, the bells of the church began to ring. And he could hear the bells of the, of, of the, of the, bell, the, the sound of the bells over the sound of the wind. And they began to, to chime the carols and telling the story of Christmas. And as he stood there, he fell to his knees and he began to weep. And he began to say, God, I didn't understand. I didn't understand. And he raised up his hands and he asked God for forgiveness because of his ignorance. And he began to thank God that he had used these tiny little sparrows to reveal to him the great truth of the incarnation. That it was because God's great desire to communicate with man that he left everything he had to be able to come down on this earth and live like us and walk like we walk and talk like we, like we talk and be able to relate in the troubles that we have, the troubles that we face daily, the burdens that we have so that we would be able to understand that he was only trying to show the way to safety. In the middle of the storm, all he wants to do is show the way to safety. Yeah, life has its storms. Life has its difficulties. But there is a way to safety. And Jesus Christ came for that sole purpose to communicate to man that there's a way to safety. He had sent his prophets. He had sent his teachers. He had even spoken his word. But he said, I'm going to become like one of them. And when I walk the earth and I live like them and I experience their problems and their troubles and I can relate to them, they'll hear me and they'll listen to my message. Amen. And that's all that God wants yeah, from us yeah, tonight yeah. is to understand. And if he was able to use those little sparrows to speak so vividly to John, John wasn't anyone. John wasn't an important person in the eyes of the world. John didn't hold an important title in the eyes of society. John was a simple farming man. And yet the God of this universe sent down those little sparrows. And he spoke into the ears of those sparrows to bring the message of Jesus Christ to John. And tonight, we are like those little sparrows. There really isn't a great significance in who we are and what we do, but we carry a simple message. And the message is that Jesus Christ wants to show man the way to safety. Man in the world is living in a storm. Man in the world is facing mountains that they look at the mountains and they think, how in the world are we going to get through this situation? I was born in Cuba, in communist Cuba. My father went to prison twice for preaching the gospel. We knew what it was to go over to the neighbor and knock on the neighbor's door and ask for a piece of hard bread to then bring it back to our house and dip it in water with sugar and that was our dinner for that night. But we believed in God. A powerful God, yeah. an amazing God who has no barriers, who are, there is no difficulty for him. And all he's asking for us tonight is to believe yeah. in God. Yeah. When Christ came down, he didn't go to the kings, 
He didn't go up to the castle and the mansion and the, the, the palace of King Herod. No, he came to some simple shepherds. Shepherds who, whose name we don't even know because their names aren't even written in the Bible. He came to some simple shepherds and he shared with them the great news. And he's sharing with us tonight the great news. We may say to ourselves, but you don't understand my situation. You don't know where I've been. And I would say to you, you're right. I don't. Because we all, we, we all live in our own world. And we all have our burdens to carry. But you know what I know for sure? Is that the Bible tells me, cast on me all your cares. Yeah. Because I yeah. care for you. He's a personal God. Yes, he came to John at that night because he cared for John. There were many people in the church worshiping, and, 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 he, and a whole program and Christmas Day was being put forth, and I'm sure the church was full of people, and John was all by himself on that little mountain, not even calling out to God, but God had an appointment for John. And God sent to John exactly what he needed to hear. And God is speaking to you tonight personally. He's a personal God. And he's saying to you tonight, because I love you, I came down so that you could know me, so that you could understand my message and know that I love you, that I was willing to leave everything behind, not only just to live, on earth like you, but to die so that my sins could be forgotten, my sins could be forgiven. The enemy comes against us with all different tactics, and he, especially with our past, and he takes the past and he makes it this big huge club and he bangs us and beats us with this past over and over again every morning, every afternoon, as much as he can to bring us down. But God says to you, listen, I came to set the captive free. I came to heal the sick. Yes. I came to bring you good news. It doesn't have to be that way. You can have peace. Amen. You can have love. Yes. You can yes. have joy. Yes. You can have hope. In the midst of the winter storm, Lord. there's a place of safety yes. in the arms of Jesus. 